Hi everyone, I'm going to continue the series of the Great Oriental Rabbonim and tonight Yutet Yah is the Hilula of Great Rabbi, the former Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshiva Parat Yosef in Yerushalayim. He was a Rosh Yeshiva for 45 years. Rabbi Ezra Atiyah, he was actually born back in the year 1885, an English calendar date of 31st of January and passed away sadly on the 25th of May 1970. He was born on Tubishvat actually, and passed away on Yutet Yar, which is obviously naturally the day after Lagba Omer. He's actually from Syria, from Aleppo. There was a great, great amount of uh, Torah scholarship in the area where a lot of great Rabbonim came from. And he was a phenomenal rabbi, he came from Great Yuchus also. He was a direct descendant it is reported, of Shem Tov Atiyah, who was actually a disciple of Rabbi Yosef Karo. And remember, Rabbi Yosef Karo was author of the Code of Jewish Law, the Shul Khan Aruch. So he was born in Aleppo, learned, learned Torah at a very, very young age. He decided that he would uh, want to become a great Torah scholar when he would be older. And naturally, obviously, he did. It was while he was 16 years old, he and his family moved to Jerusalem, where a lot of great Shabbonim moved from Aleppo to Jerusalem, and there was a big community that came over there. He went to he went to learn, he went to pray, and he was in learning inside the Bet Midrash in the Bukharian neighborhood of Shoshana Le David, which I've spoken about within regards to other rabbis. And he naturally was learning a lot of Talmud, a lot of different poskim, and everything else. And he said he was quoted that when I was young, I studied Torah through hardship. Because there was a lot of hardship in his life, a lot of difficulties with regards to finances and also uh, many, many other issues, which I would very re much recommend you read about if you uh, can search him uh, in the books and online. Also, there's a lot of information. It was actually in the year 1907, there was Rabbi Ezra Harari Raful, another Aleppo immigrant, established a yeshiva, the Yeshivat or Hel Moed, which was based naturally in Jerusalem. And naturally... Rabbi Ezra Atiyah actually became part of the staff over there at that stage in time. And he even served as a Magid Shir. In, in 1909, he married a woman from a great, great Yechos, a big tzadika, tzadika. Her name was Boli, Rabbanit Bolisa Salem, who was actually a daughter of the, Kabbal, the Kabbalist Ab, Rabbi Abraham Salem. And uh, <clears throat> eventually... There was obviously a problem with the First World War, and he had to move at a later stage, at a later stage to Egypt, to Cairo, the city of Al Cairo, where he had to deviate from his Torah scholarship and actually tried to go into business. However, that didn't necessarily work out so well. And that's with Rav Ezra Atiyah instead opened a yeshiva, which was named Ahava Ve Ahava which was in, uh, in the basement of the Cairo Rabbinate at the time, inside the, where the rabbis were dwelling. And under his direction, the yeshiva actually grew to 100 Talmudim students, uh, uh, attracting many people that were from secular backgrounds also. He gave classes to working men, to Balabatim, and he was a Dayan on the Cairo Betin, which was a very prestigious position. And after World War I ended, his wife actually joined him. They and the two children returned eventually to Yerushalayim in the year 1922. So at that stage in time, he would have been, in 1922, about uh, 37 years old. And he returned and went back to his teaching position in Yeshivat or Hel Moed. He also studied at Nechavruta with Rabbi Chaim Shaul Dweck and also with Rabbi Shlomo Eliezer Al-Fandani. And when Porat Yosef opened, the Yeshiva Porat Yosef opened in 1923, Ohel Moed, the Yeshiva Ohel Moed, they joined together at that stage in time. And following the, the sudden death of the Rosh Yeshiva, Shlomo Lani, Rav Shlomo Al Lani, Lani Ardo, in the year 1925, Chacham Ezra Atiyah was actually named as the Rosh Yeshiva at that stage in time, where he would actually serve as Rosh Yeshiva for another 45 years. And he had great amounts of influence also, Rabbi Ezra Atiyah was a, had thousands and thousands of Talmudim, and uh, so many people were mitchazek from him. Everyone respected him all over the Talmud, the Chachama, all, all for the Talmudic world and everything else. And one of his students was Chacham Ovad Yosef, a famous story about him, actually. Rabbi Ovad Yosef obviously was a great Torah talent and was the finest yeshiva student over there. And at one stage in time, I think the father of Rabbi Ovad Yosef, they were finding financial hardships. And Rabbi Ovad Yosef actually ended up working in the green, green grocers, in his grocery, in his makolet. 
And Rav Ezra Tia said, you know, this is a great talent. How can he uh, go work there? So he went to the office and tried to convince the father. And in fact, the next day, Rabbi Ezra Etiyah actually work, went to work inside the Makolet. The father said, what are you doing here? He said, no, Rabbi Ovadi Yosef, he cannot be working here. He's such a great talent. He's an alumni of the yeshiva. So I'm going to work in his uh, stead. So no, the father obviously realized how the potential of Rabbi Ovadi Yosef. So he says, no, he can go back to learning inside the yeshiva. He actually wrote different works, different books, gave Tens of thousands of Shirim all over the spectrum of the Sephardi world. He had the, even the respect of the Chazon Ish. The Chazon Ish actually gave him the highest of praises. He quoted once that the Rosh Yeshiva possesses the power of reasoning like one of the Rishonim. That was a compliment that the Chazon Ish, the great rabbi, gave uh, about him. Eventually, when he passed away in the year 1970, he was replaced by Rabbi, rabbi Yehuda Tzadka, who I've actually given a sure about and so many things can be said about him obviously a part two series will be good to make within regards to him but he left many many great students i'll give you just a few of these students rabbi ovadi yosef rabbi mordechai Eliyahu, who actually became they both became future chief rabbis of israel it was also rabbi ben sion abba shaul also naturally rabbi yehuda tzadka was a talmud of him from the for, age of 14 rabbi yitzhak kadori also Rabbi Baruch ben Hayim, also who became a, a, a leader of the Syrian community also. And Rabbi Eliyahu ben Hayim, who also became the rabbi of the Mashadi community, one I'm very much a part, a part of, from uh, Great Neck also. And Rabbi Tzion Levi also, who became the chief rabbi of Panama. So many of his students became famous across the world and influenced all different parts of the world. They came from his uh, Torah leadership. Panama, New York, you've got... You've got from all over Israel, you've got from Brooklyn, all the different areas, the influence he's got. So hopefully I'll be able to do a part two at one stage with regards to the greatness of him. So many things can be said within regards to this great Talmud Chacham taught for 45 years as Rosh Hashiva of Porat Yosef uh, uh, over there at the different time periods during the Second World War also. This was a very difficult time period over there. But the Misirat Nefesh and everything he did for the Torah, it was absolutely incredible over there. And uh, please look on him on online. It's his Hilula today on Yutet Yar. And guys, please search about him more. Have a great day.